The next item on the agenda is item number 10, approval, approval of the minutes of the April 25, 2022 board meeting. Do I hear a motion? Ms. Huddle. I move that we approve the minutes of the April 25th, 2022 board meeting. Do we have a second, Mr. Hogan? Okay. Um, any discussion on the matter? Um, all in, I'll call for the vote, all in favor? So it's uh, unanimous seven to zero. Ms. Ms. Uh, Hammond is has raised her hand also. Okay, the next item on the agenda is item 11, public participation. And I know that our constituents don't need to be, this doesn't need to be repeated, but I have to do it anyway, okay? The board welcomes and encourages public participation. However, the privilege of addressing the board does not include the ability to make personal attacks on any board member, district employee, or other member of the public. We respectfully ask that you adhere to the procedures and the decorum provided in the pol uh, pub uh, board policy BEDH, public participation at meetings. Your comments should be limited to three minutes. Questions asked during per public participation will be handled in accordance with board policy BEDH. With that, I am going to turn it over to Ms. Amanda Taylor. Thank you, Mr. Loveless. Uh, first, Bonnie Stewart of Irmo is here to speak about the bond referendum. I'd like to thank the board for the opportunity to speak. Um, I am, I live in Carmel Commons. I'm the president of the HOA. Um, recently named president, I've served off and on for several years. Um, a, a few points of interest um, and then also some questions and I'll make it very brief. Um, I will tell you that I am aware, have read and have a copy of the um, gifted uh, agreement for the property of Harbison West as an educational facility and I am aware that there is a rescission aspect to that document if it's not used as such. My second, my second point is the majority of the uh, Carmel Commons neighborhood are retirees and um, as such, a lot of them were not aware of what has been transpiring as it relates to the Harbison West campus. So I would like to invite any of the board members or yourself, Mr. Ross, to uh, come and meet with us um, in the community. We'd be glad to do that, or we would be glad to come to one of the uh, other arranged meetings so that we can discuss our concerns and interest. Um, a couple of the points that I was interested in was covered the fact that the May 17th meeting would be virtual. Um, that will be, I think that will be beneficial for some of our residents, but I still believe that there would be some that would like for you or some of the members of the board to actually come out and we could arrange a meeting. Um, I wanted to talk about um, the security comments that I heard about Harbison, the Harbison West um, campus because the Carmel Commons neighborhood and other neighborhoods back up to that property. And we have security concerns because the campus has not been secured. We have had damaged properties throughout the year. Uh, years we've had all types of issues. I'm aware that when Mike Poole was there uh, for several years that the security cameras were not operable. So I am very thrilled to hear that whatever the decision is with the campus, number one, if it is retained as an educational facility, as it was gifted, that there would be some movement towards securing the campus, not just for the children that are attending, but also as it impacts the neighbors. Because even though the majority of my neighborhood, Carmel Commons, are older and retired, we are tax contributors. We have all contributed and still contribute. And if you pass a bond and it is passed, if it's voted in, then we're gonna be contributors again. And as a good neighbor, we would like for the district to um, include us in the security. Uh, just one other thing, and then I'll go. Um, the time frame is that set in stone for the August 
15th date at 12 noon, and that date has to do with the fact that it has to be completed to be added to the referendum for the upcoming vote in the fall. Is that a correct statement? Okay. Thank you all for your time, and I would really like to hear from someone about a meeting with our community. Thank you. Daniel Parks of Chapin. Renee Kelly of Chapin. Thank you very much for this opportunity. I just wanted to bring up some general concerns I have about our public schools that are heading down the wrong path. There's only so much time each day um, at school that teachers have, and the schools need to start focusing on teaching the basics of education to build a strong foundation for the future of our children to be productive citizens, especially in these younger years. The basics should not be incorporating the new social emotional learning agendas into the reading, writing, history, math, and science curriculum. Two plus two does equal four. Men have XY chromosomes and women have XX chromosomes. Our children should learn about US history, both the good and the bad, but don't teach the nonsense um, that some of this um, that some of the children are in oppressed groups, other of the children are in the oppressor group. This sounds like the type of bullying um, that was discussed earlier tonight, social bullying. It hurts children's reputations, hurts their relationships, it embarrasses them in public, it leaves someone out on purpose. All children need to learn to treat each other with respect, regardless of skin color, nationality, religion, or gender. Regarding the whole child curriculum, schools aren't supposed to be one-stop shopping like Walmart. The main focus should be on the education of children. They're not our health care provider of children. They're not the mental health provider of children. We don't need them collecting, um, sending out surveys to children under the guise of SEL. This is an invasion of the privacy of the student, of the family, and the school certainly is not a substitute parent. We are the primary stakeholders in the education and the future of our children. Thank you. Kim Murphy of Chapin. That's all, Mr. Lovett. That concludes. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you.